to manifest money using the law of attraction. This is the fastest, this is the easiest, and this is the surest way. And by surest, I mean this is the way you will actually do it. There's a lot of videos on how to attract more money and how to do it. The truth is that it's very hit or miss unless you do this. And this is incorporating Sigmund Freud, Freudian unconscious uh, theories. When you can use these teachings of Freud and you can use the law of attraction properly, then money is going to come to you easily. So this is things that you haven't heard before. Make sure you watch this video all the way through. If you would like more money, if you're excited about this video, do me a favor, hit the like button right over there on the side. Hit that big old like button right over there to send this out into the YouTube universe. And my name is Jake Ducey from jakeducey.com. This changed my entire life. And I'm really excited to see all the great things that come your way because of it. Let's dive right into this video. Number one, it doesn't matter how hard you work or how clear your goals are, you will not get the money you want unless or until you address your unconscious emotions and unconscious memories throughout your life all the way back to childhood with respect to money. So growing up, your parents might have got divorced over money. In fact, it's the number one cause of divorce. So if you were a little kid and you remember when you were seven years old, your first memory you can recall of your parents not having a good relationship and it was headed south. And you can remember that you were at the dinner table and your mom and your dad were arguing about money. Maybe they were having money problems or one or the other was mad that the other one wasn't pulling their weight or was spending too much of it and they were in debt or they couldn't afford their house anymore and they were talking about should we, should we downsize and it was very stressful and then they eventually got divorced. Now, it may not have been a big deal to you at the time because you were a kid and you were like, wow, what's going on? But in that moment, that memory and emotion stored into your unconscious mind. Unconscious means it is legitimately unconscious. You are absolutely unaware of it. And here's the other thing that that Freudian psychology with respect to the unconscious teaches us. It teaches us that your unconscious mind is irrational. It's actually illogical. So it comes to assumptions that are sometimes flawed, false, or they aren't helping you later in life. So your parents get divorced and it sucks. And you can remember that the cause of it was money. 50% chance the cause of it was money based off of the divorce rates and what we know about the causes of it. So when you were a kid or when you were growing up and your parents got divorced and you heard them argue about money, you would have associated money with pain unconsciously because nobody wants their parents to get divorced. Nobody wants to deal with the emotional trauma of that. And the reasons that you heard growing up at the dinner table were all about the problems with money. So you unconsciously associated money with pain. So the unconscious says, I don't want money. It's bad. Or let's say that while you were watching television as a kid, your mother or your father or your grandma or your grandpa or your stepdad or your, or your uh, caretaker was angrily telling you while watching the television and seeing rich people that rich people are bad and they're going to hell. God does not love them. And they were like hell in a hand basket angry about rich people. And you didn't want to go to hell and you didn't want to be a bad person. So unconsciously in that moment, you decided that you weren't going to have a lot of money. You were never going to be rich because you didn't want to go to hell and you didn't want to be bad. This isn't conscious, by the way. You, you weren't six years old going, consciously, this sounds reasonable based off of Susie over here talking about uh, how hell is going to burn all the rich people and or you're listening to your preacher talk at church when you were younger or at Sunday school. 
and you were like, yes, I do not want to go to hell, so I'm going to consciously decide in this moment I will never have money. It's unconscious. It's totally unconscious. But it stores in the unconscious and it expresses itself over the course of your life. So your unconscious is actually at the ship of your financial life until you take control of it and reprogram it, which is what we're talking about in this video. So before we proceed, if this is making sense to you and you're like, wow, this is interesting and it makes you start asking yourself, well, how I've been programmed, what's in my unconscious with respect to money? Make sure you hit the like button and if you want to reprogram it, I have a success hypnosis. It's jakeshypnosis.com right there down below. It's a success hypnosis that'll reprogram your subconscious mind and rewire it. And it's right there down below. It's jakeshypnosis.com right there down below and it's totally free. Over 400,000 people from all over the world have used it. Now, let's get back to the video. So, let's say that you were some years age and you worked for some money and you saved it. And then you eventually lost it. You either invested into a scam or you invested into a certain company and the money and then the company went bankrupt and you lost all your money or you bought a house and it was over leveraged and then when the big real estate market crash happened, you lost everything that you owned and you went bankrupt. You had some money but somebody stole it from you. You had you accumulated some level of money that you were excited about. And it could have been $500 or it could have been $5 million. It doesn't matter what the number is, but some a number that you were emotionally attached to to some degree, you worked for it, and then you lost it some way and it was painful to lose it. So in that moment, you could have been an adult. You could have, This could have happened nine years ago or four years ago. So your unconscious didn't want you to experience that pain again. So your unconscious made it very easy and it said, Dude, I'm just gonna make sure you never have money anymore, then we won't have to deal with the pain of this. You could have been trying to start your business and you spent all your money and it wasn't working out, or you were trying to do some sales or advertising and you got rejected so many times that it became like, just, it was just, a, became depressing. And so your unconscious, because of an undesirable result, maybe you watch your grandpa try to start a business or your dad try to start a business or your best friend try to start a business. It took three years of their life. They went from happy to depressed. They were stressed all the time. They started having some physical problems. Maybe they even went bankrupt or they decided to pack it up and go back in and get a career that they didn't like because their business they went into debt for it. So then you said, I don't want to deal with money because this is more money, more problems, bro. It's not really more money, more problems. Actually, money solves a lot of problems. It's that you, your unconscious that is irrational, associated money with problems or money with pain or money with stress or money with difficulty. And your unconscious and your brain just want to help you. So they said, let me make it easy on you. I'm gonna make your life so much easier. I'm gonna make you start saying unconsciously and rationalize it and you're gonna start going, you know, at least I'm happy. Money's not that important. And then you started developing that and then boom, that's why you don't have the money that you want because the unconscious did it. And so when you can learn how to identify the unconscious, which is what I'm about to share, and you can utilize this law of attraction process to attract more money, or you can use this um, Sigmund Freud teachings of the unconscious to identify it, then you're free from it. Now, this goes so far as the person that has money and constantly loses it. They put away their first $25,000 and then they invest it in something and lose it. Oh, I'll learn my lesson. And then seven years later, they blow it again on something else. And then they blow it again on something else and they keep getting in the same problems. And they don't even know why, why does this keep happening? It's because the unconscious has somehow been programmed to not have money, to think it's bad or to think that it causes more problems. So consciously you keep accumulating the money, but then you keep losing the money over and over again. There's all of these ways with every relation to money, has been programmed through the unconscious. Now that's only bad when you haven't heard a video like this. It's bad when you're like, well, I'll just work harder. Why don't I have money? I'll keep working harder. So then you start working 18 hours a day and you start being all stressed and depressed all the time and you develop 
physical stress symptoms and you're, you have all these problems because you're working so much, but you watch a motivational Instagram post that said, there's only 24 hours in a day. I work all 24 of them. And you were like, wow, that's deep. I'm gonna work 24 hours a day. And it doesn't matter how hard you consciously work. If when you were 11 years old, your Sunday school teacher told you that hell was really bad and you were gonna go if you were rich, or you saw your parents argue over money or whatever, you have some type of a negative association with money since you were a kid, but then later in your life, you were like, well, I want money because I want to put my kids in a nice school and I want a nice car and I want a nice house and I want blah, 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 blah. Even if you worked hard, you still wouldn't get financial freedom because you were unconsciously programmed another way. You'd either never be able to attract the money, even if you worked hard, or you'd accumulate and lose it constantly. Because the unconscious was programmed that way. So let me ask you, can you think of some ways maybe that you, what are your earliest childhood memories about money? What did your dad used to say about money? What did your mom used to say? Did you grow up in a church? What did they tell you about money? Did you grow up in the foster care system? What did any adult figures in your life teach you about money there? Can you remember any other people, circumstances, or situations about money? Just any of them, positive, negative. What do you remember? What sayings or slogans did the adults around you, did your aunt or your grandfather used to say about money? What did they say about rich people? What did they say about having a nice house? What did they say about having a really nice car? Can you remember any of them? Because just bringing awareness to them is actually what frees you from them. It doesn't need to be this really deep, scary process and you're like, yeah, and this happened and then this, it's just, our awareness of them in and of ourselves free, free us from them. You know, in the Bible it says that the truth will set you free. But first you gotta find the truth. And the truth is that the unconscious controls life and the unconscious is often irrational and illogical. And the unconscious also controls how much money you accumulate or do not accumulate in your life. Maybe your parents were in debt all the time and now you're $18,000 in credit card debt and you don't even know how you're $18,000 in debt because you keep telling yourself that you're not gonna be in debt anymore, but you keep being in debt. Just the awareness that your unconscious is controlling the ship and you've been programmed by your mom and your dad who had financial problems or debt problems, just the awareness of that is what actually frees you from that pattern in your unconscious. Just the knowledge in and of itself frees you from it. The knowledge that your unconscious drives the financial ship of your life. Now this is so exciting because it's the key to financial freedom. It's the key to your bank account finally growing. Why do you think so many people that whose parents didn't have money, why do you think that a lot of financial problems are second, third, and fourth generation because unconsciously we inherited the same emotions and blueprint from those around us. Or maybe it's the opposite side and you, and you hear that crazy rags to rich story and it's a person that saw all the poverty around them and they said, I do not accept this. This is not what I'm going to have. Then they go to the exact opposite pattern and they become like the richest person in the world or something, right? You can see now that the unconscious controls it. So then the question is, what's in my unconscious? And what's more importantly, what new ideas do I wanna put in it? I invite you to put things like money is good. In fact, comment that down below, money is good. Comment down below, money is good. Comment that down below and say it. Say that money is good. And then all of a sudden, you start to put a new focal point into your unconscious. Money is good. Can you imagine if your entire life from the time you were one years old, you've been programmed that money is good? You were programmed that you were smart enough to attract it. You could help more people if you have money. Actually, money is gonna make you more generous in life and you wanna be generous. 
you found out that money was going to um, help you experience and spread love because you could donate, you could bring your friends places, you could have a nice house, you and your and your love of your life wouldn't have to worry about money, you could put your kids into the best school, it was gonna be fun and you could drive a nice car and it was gonna save you from a lot of stress and worry. Imagine if you were programmed that way and you were programmed to believe that it wasn't hard to acquire. You'd be programmed at a very young age to have money and guess what? you'd have it because your unconscious would be set up for it. So that's why I always talk about using my success hypnosis to start to reprogram the unconscious. It's right there down below, it's free to use, it's jakeshypnosis.com right there down below, jakeshypnosis.com, it's right there down below, and it's free to use. When I discovered all these things that I've been talking about in this video, I was like, duh, no wonder I work all the time, but I have no results that I'm proud of. I've been working for years and years and years, nothing's been working out. I, I work all the time, but I'm not getting any results. My, my wife, girlfriend at the time, was in debt for me, because I wasn't able to pay any bills or I wasn't able to get any progress, but I worked all the time and I felt like a victim. And then I realized, wow, I have unconscious programs about money that have been blocking it. And then I, I identified some of those memories, some of those slogans and belief systems and emotions about money that I had. And then I was free from them. And then I started reprogramming my mind and my whole life changed. And it's been a beautiful journey since then. And it's because I've been using this success hypnosis every single day. So a few years ago, I put it up for free online and crazily enough, over 400,000 people from all over the world have used it, um, like pretty much every single country. And it's right there down below, it's free to use. It's jakeshypnosis.com right there down below. It's jakeshypnosis.com. You know when you might be saying, well, Jake, can you give me an example from your life? And so when I was starting my career, I dropped out of college and I was in economics class and I was studying business and economics and I dropped out. And it was kind of a, a turbulent time because most people thought it was a really bad idea and they made that very apparent to me. And they go, well, what are you gonna do for money if you drop out? You need to do this to become successful and blah, 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 blah. And I was like, but I just wanna be happy. And so I backpacked around the world, wrote a book about it, and it was called Into the Wind, and then that kinda launched my career. This was when I was 20. And so it started building eventually in, in the years to come. I published two other books with Penguin Random House started to build a my career but I picked what I was doing because I wanted to be happy not because I wanted money and I had this choice as a freshman in college do I want to get a business degree and do all these things even though I seemingly could care less about this and I'll postpone my life for three or four more years get the degree and then I can make some money and then later in life I'll find the things that make me happy and then maybe then I'll I'll go travel and then maybe then I'll go write books and those types of things maybe sometime in the future but I said screw that I'm doing it right now and then I it was really hard and because 95% of books don't sell 2,500 copies it can it's 95% of people then therefore aren't making a living doing this and so it was difficult. And so I essentially became like a workaholic for a lot of years. And I didn't, I, I didn't, but I didn't have any money though. But I was working all the time. I was like getting success. I started publishing books with Penguin Random House and they're the biggest English publisher in the world. But I was spending all my money. Spent it, if I had it, spent it on publicists. I spent it on flights. I spent it on free events. I spent it on seminar spaces. I spent it on hiring, uh, like event booking people and like on, uh, speaking coaches. I said the word, ah, I spent so much money learning to not say the word, ah, and then I just said the word, ah, dang it. So I spent all my money on things like that when I had it, coaches, consultants, all these things. So I didn't ever have any left. So I was always stressed because I never had any money because I was always spending as much as I was making or more. And my girlfriend, eventually when I got one, I was really lucky that I met Ashley and she went into debt for me. I didn't know that at the time, 
but I wasn't able to pay the bills and I was stressed all the time. So she was working 50 hours a week, commuting two hours, uh, one each way. I said, ah, again, and commuting each way. And she went into debt to help me out. So I eventually got to a boiling point and I said, what's the deal? I work so hard. I'm working every single day, guaranteed eight hours. A lot of days I'm pulling 10, 12 hour work days but I'm not getting progress and it's been numerous years and I'm still just as stressed about money as when I started and still unsure of my financial future as when I started, even though I put in all these hours of work, maybe these Instagram quotes I'm reading online that say there's only 24 hours in a day. I work all 24 of them. That's how you get ahead in life. Maybe those things weren't really as true as I thought they were. And then I discovered the unconscious mind and this type of Freudian mindset that the unconscious has been programmed, oftentimes illogically, and the unconscious controls life, but it's unconscious. Meaning we are absolutely 100 million percent unaware of it, thinking we're in control of our life, saying, if I just work harder, if I just do this, then I'll get it. That's all conscious, but the unconscious controls life. And I faced so much trauma, I lost all my friends, my mom thought I was crazy. It was a really tough time when I dropped out to try to do what I'm doing because I had so much resistance to it from other people and like people I thought were my friends making fun of me and like it was sad. So I unconsciously associate and I said, look, I'm try I wanna be happy, I don't care about money. That's what I would tell everyone why I was dropping out when they say, you gotta stay in school, get your business degree, then you'll be successful, you could do all this stuff later in life. And so I decided then that essentially money was bad, that I was gonna be happy instead of wealthy, happy instead of wealthy. So then years later, as I was working hard and I had more responsibilities, had a girlfriend, I was still unconsciously operating under the assumption that money was bad and if I had any money, if I had any money, I was bad and it wasn't true to my original mission in life. Because my mission was I'm gonna drop out, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, change my life, uh, I'm gonna become the happiest version of myself, I'm gonna do what I do because I love it and I'm gonna inspire as many people as I possibly can beyond my wildest imaginations. But if I had any money, I wouldn't be true to that mission, I'd be bad. That's what the unconscious says, this isn't conscious. So the unconscious believes all that. So then, guess what? As I said earlier, if I had money, I spent it. If I had any money, I just spent it all. I reinvested 100%, not 90% and I kept 10% for myself, 100% of my money all the time, so I never had money. And I wasn't making a lot anyway, so it's not like there was a lot to come by because I thought if I made money doing this thing that I cared so deeply about, I would be bad or untrue to my mission or not in integrity or I would become a bad person. And I thought that I dropped out of college because I thought that just blindly pursuing this path that money was making the world a bad place. So I unconsciously was blocking it. I never knew that. And I was sitting in my apartment in Hollywood at the time when I lived in Hollywood with Ashley and I was like, I finally understand my unconscious. This is crazy. I never knew I thought this. And just the awareness in the Bible, it says that the truth will set you free. But you gotta know the truth for the truth to set you free. It can't set you free unless you're aware of it. And I finally became aware that my unconscious was controlling the ship and my unconscious was negatively programmed with respect to money. So instead of saying, I'll be, I'd rather be happy instead of rich. I started saying, I will be rich and happy. I will have both, thank you very much. And that I will actually be better at pursuing my work. If I have money, I can get a good camera. I can not be stressed all the time so I can be more creative. I can hire more people so we can reach and inspire and impact more people's lives. And, and slowly but surely, all of my perception about money shifted. Guess what else shifted? my bank account started growing. So I'm gonna end this video with three takeaways for you that are gonna make your bank account start growing for you. Number one is, after this video ends, 
contemplate what we've been talking about here. Can you think of some of your early childhood memories with respect to money? Or can you think in the more formative, older years of your life, you've had something emotional or, yeah, you've had something emotional with respect to money that could possibly be in your subconscious or you made a big decision, you lost some money, you saw someone lose some money, you were rejected a bunch when you were trying to start your business and you made a certain belief system about money unconsciously that's been controlling the ship. So just like I shared with you that previous example of me, see if you can identify something or the way that your dad would talk about money when you were little or whatever it is. And at the top of the paper, write the words unconscious money, unconscious money. And then see what comes out of you. Set the intention for your unconscious to, to bring awareness to you about the ways that it's been programmed about money. That's what's going to allow you to reprogram your unconscious and reprogram your brain to have money instead of block money. So step number one is the journal. Step number two, after you've identified some of your unconscious patterns, belief systems, and behaviors about money and the ways that you've been programmed from other people, from negative experiences, from things people said, from religion, from the fear of something, from hating rich people, whatever it is, once you've done that, then re frame it and decide that you're going to be rich. Decide that you're going to have money. Guess what? People don't decide that they're going to have money. Have you ever thought about that? They want it. They wish they had it, but unconsciously they resent money because it's not there or they think they're going to be bad if they have it. So they resent rich people or whatever else it is. So they've never really decided. They've never consciously said from this day forward, my life's going to change. I'm going to start to have money. I'm going to start saving 20% of every dollar that comes in. I'm going to start saying money is good. I'm going to start thinking about all the good things that I can do with money. I'm going to start spending my time contemplating my belief systems about money. I'm going to start working towards what I want, but I'm going to recognize now that I'm unconsciously programmed for having money rather than blocking it, I'm going to decide I'm going to have it. And when you make that conscious decision to have money and your subconscious, or rather in the, in this instance of, of, of Freud, your, your unconscious, your total unconscious is now programmed to have it, then you will start to possess it. And number three, brainwash yourself before the world brainwashes you. That's why I'm so into reprogramming the unconscious because we know it's controlling the whole life. So I created a software called the second mind. Now we know due to neuroplasticity that a lot of the things about the unconscious and old emotions, they aren't just this abstract thing in the unconscious human psyche that Sigmund and Freud discovered. Actually early emotions or just emotions in general, they fire nerve cells, they fire brain cells. And there's a term in neuroscience that we've discovered that's called Hebb's law. And that says that the nerve cells or brain cells that fire together, they wire together. So if you've had some negative things about money, it's wired into the brain. Now, neuroplasticity is about the brain's ability to change itself, to rewire itself. It may be programmed to block money. It may be programmed to think, to fear hell. It may be, if you're rich, it may be programmed to think that you're not good enough or smart enough and the negative feelings associated with it. It may be programmed for the energy of constant stress about money, but you can reprogram it. You can actually rewire your brain to become a magnet for prosperity and opportunities. And I call that your second mind. That's the one you've consciously programmed after you've watched this video and used these steps about the unconscious. And now you've reprogrammed it. So I created a software called the second mind to do this for you, to make the process easier. It's free to demo. It's right there down below. It's thesecondmind.com. It's right there down below the second mind com right there down below and what that's going to do is help you reprogram it so you can attract more abundance into your life the secondmind.com and it's free to demo right there down below the secondmind.com right there down below 
So thank you for watching this video. Hey, if this video speaks to you, comment down below. I will now attract money. I will now attract money. You're making a decision in this moment to be free from all unconscious past. You're making a decision to be free from all limiting beliefs and limiting emotions with respect to money. You've made a decision now that it's going to start coming to you and coming to you it will. Beginning today with fantastic opportunities, new emails for awesome opportunities, phone calls, meeting new people in aisle seven of the grocery store and it turns into a great prosperous opportunity, a new client, a new business opportunity presents itself to you as you continue to travel the path of more and more abundance. If that speaks to you and you say, hey, amen to that, Jake, make sure you like this video right now. Hit the like button on this video to send it out into the YouTube universe. Hit like right over there. Then hit the subscribe button and bell notification. The bell notification is what notifies you for new videos. Even if you already subscribe, just double check you've actually hit the bell notification. Otherwise, you might not get notified for any more awesome videos like this. So subscribe, bell notification, thesecondmind.com right there down below. That's thesecondmind.com and it's right there down below. Thank you for watching this video. Awesome things are headed your way. You're free from your past. Money is good and you are starting to attract it.